Now, so just going back to the pathology we were talking about before, we have these things in the body called tumor suppressor genes. Mm. And that's what they do. They, 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 they're going to inhibit cell division and inhibit the formation of tumors and cancers. So having healthy, active tumor, tumor suppressor genes mm. is going to greatly reduce my chances of getting cancer. So I want my tumor suppressor genes to be as active as possible. And the idea is that if the spike protein can inhibit the activity of the tumor suppressor genes, then what is left to suppress the tumor? And you mentioned the specific examples there, MHS3, P53. And I think BRCA2 is probably another one, that BRCA, breast, breast I, I, cancer. I saw it mentioned in a review. Uh, that was, uh, I hadn't seen the primary data on this. But that's, again, that's the suppressor gene. That's the one associated with uh, breast and ovarian. So people who have BRCA mutations are much more likely to get breast and ovarian cancer before they're 50 than those that haven't, which really uh, upholds the, the, the model of, of what I was saying. Interfere with these things and your cancer pops out a lot earlier. And that's what I'm worried about. So, so the, 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 these suppressor genes are exactly what we want to be healthy, but they are potentially being inhibited and the other thing the paper pointed out was that the modified uh, mrna uh, vaccine contains n1 methyl pseudo uridine <laughs> now this is one of the bases in rna and um it's not the natural uridine it's a pseudo uridine because it lasts for much longer and that means the spike protein could be produced for a, a much longer period of time again potentially going on to inhibit more activity of the tumor suppressor genes it really is quite a frightening um quite a frightening potential scenario it, it certainly is now i you know again when i pointed all this out i've uh, you, you know people um say uh, shut up you're just a cancer doctor you don't know what you're talking about and that really gets me wild as you know from all my hiv experience but one of my other things i've been on uh, many scientific advisory boards for you know grants authorities and companies and I was on the scientific advisory board for a company that, it, after its name, says the messenger RNA vaccine company. I was on that board for five years and I knew there was a big problem because messenger RNA gets dissolved and killed and mopped up in 20 seconds if it's in the body. So you can't possibly use it for a vaccine until you stabilise it. And the very fact, if you stabilise it, the big problem is it's stabilised. <laughs> so that is the fundamental flaw with RNA vaccines. And, and carries on for an indeterminate period of time. Banned. I mean, no both. They should be completely banned. Mm -hmm. uh, if they're going to be used for anything, it has to be what they are, gene therapies. Mm -hmm. And you might use those in advanced cancer and things like that, but you should never use them in general population as vaccines because they're not. Yeah, because in advanced cancer, someone's life is already at risk, so we can yes. carry out more risky treatments, potentially. It's all about risk-benefit analysis. Um, the paper also talks about uh, suppression of cancer immunosurveillance. Hmm. What is cancer immunosurveillance and how could it be suppressed? Well, I think that that's what I was mentioning about the T-cells. Yeah. It, it, it's just suppressing the T-cells, yeah. and that's what they do. And if you call, if you do things that suppress the T-cells, up you pop with cancers. And the, the ones you're most likely uh, uh, have got along that progression line, sitting at five out of six, they're the first ones to pop up. And HIV showed us that. It was just uh, an incredible model. So you suppress the T-cell surveillance, up pop the lymphomas. Because the lymphoma is associated with EBV, Epstein-Barr virus. Everybody is infected with Epstein-Barr virus. Only about 1%, far, far less than 1% ever get a cancer with it. But what that did is remove the T-cell suppression, which is uh, T-cell surveillance, which is keeping it in check. And the other one that popped up was Kaposi's sarcoma. I mean, that really popped up massively in uh, HIV. And there wasn't a virus associated with it, but they thought there must be, and they found it. And that's oh, called really? human herpes virus 8. And left to its own devices, it does nothing. It will induce change, some nasty changes in the skin, etc., but it won't kill you. But you lose your T-cell ability to suppress that virus, 
and it comes out with great angiogenic capacity sarcoma that has actually throttled people. I mean, it's, it's so out of control, it'll actually throttle them so they can't breathe. I mean, it's just unbelievably horrible. And that's never been seen until the HIV came along. But we know the principle because you see these diseases and skin cancer, what have you, in patients who are heavily suppressed and long-term suppressed for transplants, etc. And then you have to modify that, etc. So that's what is mean by the, the immune surveillance. It is, it's purely the T-cell and the innate immune system that are, are doing it. And what it tells you is what I've been arguing from the, the beginning of my oncology career is the most important thing in controlling cancer is the immune system. And I was always told, no, it's not. No, it's not. It's, uh, you have to kill them with toxins. I mean, everything was chemotherapy or radiotherapy. Uh, and the, the, the result was all the same as, you know, total destruction. It didn't, ent didn't entertain any role for the immune system whatsoever. I mean, I would imagine at our kind of age, um, I probably get cancer most days, do I? Is that reasonable? It's just the immune system keeps it down or eradicates it? Most people speculate, uh, I mean, people go into this, some mathematicians sort of even reduce it to the number of cells that might mutate arise in your body every day. And uh, the, the, the T-cell system controls them. And I, I mentioned before that I think that the, it is the innate immune system that controls them, as opposed to the highly adapted one, which vaccines are, are meant to introduce. And that the thing that concerns me, and if I was uh, chief medical officer, I'd want to do something about it, is that highly important innate immune response falls off when you're about 55. It really starts giving up. And by the time you're 70, 75, it's in your boots. And if you transform a figure for the cancer instance of that age range, it is on the floor about 50, 55, and it goes up and up and up and up to your 70, 80. It's, it's not necessarily causal, but the association is so tight. And it's a perfect uh, inverse uh, correlation, isn't it, as the cancers go up? So in exactly it, the same way the T cells go yeah. down. In fact, when you draw it, it looks like a butterfly wings. On yeah. The yeah, yeah. So obviously, to help control cancer, the best thing to do is try and boost that innate immune system as it declines. It's involved in everything, you know, with the susceptibility to infections, bizarrely cardiac disease, but definitely uh, um, uh, cancer. And uh, doing something about it and addressing that, I think, is one of the most important things that uh, a chief medical officer could do, uh, but they don't seem to be interested. We do know, and you've had other guests here, who've told you the most important thing everybody can do, and the government should do it, as they, everything they orchestrate and conduct, they seem to make a mess of. <laughs> Vitamin D supplementation to good high levels is the most important thing that can be done to stop the innate immune system doing. They don't do anything about that. And when they do come out with some inane comment, they say, well, all you need is uh, 400 international units for your Nothing. Bones. Now, we're not talking about bones. <laughs> we're, talking, <laughs> we're talking about the, the immune system and, and the, the, the surveillance of these other diseases. Uh, that, that, that does really annoy me. And the other things, these... Uh, that it can be stimulated with mycobacterial things and of various descriptions. And I focused on a heat-killed mycobacterium, which I've discussed here before. Now, that is so easy to make and do that I, I would, again, look at that. Uh, I mean, they, they put so many hurdles. And I, I noticed there was a, something in the paper only this weekend that it's still impossible to get for small uh, companies to get sensible things through uh you know for cancer the hurdles are so high and so prolonged cost of fortune this is why these companies go and collapse and yet you come along with something like an unproven untested uh with a, a heritage that every time it's been tried in any other form it's been a disaster and all the things they get well, we want to make sure it's safe yeah, yeah. and we must have more this is what they told me they told me about that. It needs more work in animal models. Yeah. This is after it's been in patients, you know, hundreds of them without a single side effect. 
Yet they didn't seem remotely interested about the side effects or safety of the vaccines that they uh, poured out. It's completely discombobulated. It's com I, I, I'm, I personally think the MHRA is unfit for purpose and should be sure completely shut down, uh, as I do with um, the, the, uh, the, the Department of Health and the NHS that uh, run it or meant to regulate that too, because it's been an absolute disaster. It's a disaster for what we've had to go through with the vaccines, but it's a disaster is that they seem to make it so difficult but anything that is effective, safe, and cheap, yeah, they're not interested in. You've got so you, you, you've used this. It's a B, basically a BCG type preparation, isn't yeah, it, with, 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 with bacteria, hmm. and and you've kept patients alive with this for decades. Um, it, you know it boosts T cells, hmm. and yet and yet, um, if it was available, I would. Uh, get the train or drive down there to you yeah, now and yeah. be injected with it because I'd love to boost my T-cells. <laughs> the, the Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency won't license it for compassionate use. It just seems outrageous. I think I'm being deprived of... Uh, you, you, you could boost my T-cells mm. tomorrow mm. and yet you're not allowed to. That's just, that's just outrageous. They won't, let the, they won't let the company release it for compassionate use or off-label use when that that has been a pattern which used to exist, but they, I mean, it's under the guise of safety. When there are literally thousands of people being given this and similar uh, things in TB trials with no side effects whatsoever, yet they bang on about side effects and safety issues and stuff. I mean, it's just a fuss. It is a total fuss. And, and if you were allowed to boost my T cells, I'm less likely to get a whole range of cancers. Probably get less infections. Yes. And uh, and it's safe. And in fact, to call this a vaccine is misleading because this is giving some 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 uh, bore buffered from what I remember uh, yeah, atten yeah. heat attenuated yeah. Yeah. bacteria. And and to use the same title for that as these as these wretched mRNA genetic concoctions. Uh, to me, is quite is quite an outrageous uh, we actually, yeah. We actually conflation. Call, we actually call these thing, these uh, the category they fit in as immune modulators. Yes, uh, as as opposed to vaccines, because vaccines yeah. now got a really dirty name. Yeah, and the COVID vaccines are are COVID. What what BioTNTech says on their first sheets, they go uh, COVID vaccine and gene therapy. They actually have gene therapy written on the other stagging. It's that blatant in your face. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I've just got really one more question in mind. Um, from your experience, what blood levels of vitamin D are desirable in cancer management and cancer prevention? Uh, over 100 nanomoles per litre, which yeah. is twice the level that the NHS say is yeah. normal. So, so that that that's about forty nanograms per mil, isn't it? R roughly yeah. that in, in American uh, over a yeah. hundred. That 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 is that is that is really useful, actually. So, um, I, I, GPs around the country should be testing this and titrating I, I, everyone I, I, up to that level. I would have thought. I first picked this up when I was doing very early cancer vaccines, uh, and then we had the immune modulators. The vaccine implies it induces a particular immune response against a certain particular antigen. That's a vaccine. Now, the, the IMM mycobacteria, they don't do that. They, they induce an activity of the innate immune system that then allows a T cell to see something that it uh, hitherto hadn't seen. It's like putting glasses on it. And so you yeah, 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 yeah. then see it and that's, you get a knock-on effect, like domino effect, by doing this. The problem with cancer vaccines, as I pointed out, and I, because I was a very early a big fan of it, and i very uh, quick to know, want to know what works and what doesn't work, is cancer vaccines only work for a, a few months. For, for the, the simplicity is that when you get resistant to chemotherapy, the tumour gets resistant and goes on another path. The same thing happens if you immunise against a certain antigen. Of course, we can control them in mouse models and you will see improvements in the humans, but they only last three months or so, six months at the most. So what's the point of that? You want something better. You might be able to use it for a, uh, a focused, uh, targeted beating up of a residual cell, but 
if you don't do it within a certain time, the tumour is just going to mutate and escape. So that is why we've got to be very careful with the word vaccine, because it's, in both cases, it's very misleading. Yeah, but if, 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 you, if you use one of, one of your uh, immune mo uh, modulators, hmm. that's not specific. That's going to boost the body's own T cell responses. Hmm. And the T cells are already pretty smart. Hmm. There's just not enough of them. <laughs> You know, you know the, the, the T cells are, are, being, are, are, are part of creation. They're, they're, they're brilliant. Mm. So you know whether you believe they're created or evolved doesn't matter. They're amazing mm. physiological um, cells yeah. uh, that, that can do all sorts them, of things. We need to boost them a bit. Yeah, without them you die. Yeah. And as you get older, they they give up before you do. So it's a logical thing to give them a bit of help. Yeah. Well, as soon as soon as this. Uh, immune modulator to boost my t-cells is available i'll be down there like a shot and i would appreciate <laughs> I would appreciate you giving me one I need people to 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 lobby uh the mhra and whoever is meant to control them we really do we, we really do. do because they're not doing their job on anything no. It's, out, it's outrageous and it's also very consistent with professor clancy i know you're familiar with his work uh, in australia giving a uh, immune immune uh, attenuated uh, mm. bacteria mm. Uh, that then it's, goes to the pair, pair of factors and goes off to promote mucosal immunity yeah yeah it's the same, it's the same principle just different ways of doing it mm. yeah 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 so um i think practically um people need to we don't want to frighten people but we do want people to get treatment as early as possible if cancers do develop. Mm. So I, I think really it's a good idea for people to be aware of potential cancer signs in themselves and their loved ones and really go to the doctor as early as possible uh, if you have anything that you are uncomfortable with and, and, and get early treatment because that's going to massively influence the, the outcome of the disease. Indeed. Yeah. Professor, as always, um, fascinating, mind-blowing, uh, a little perturbing. Uh, but uh, the thing I've really enjoyed and benefited from on this talk was the, 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 just the, the complete uh, integration and harmony between the medical, your medical experience and the science. They just mesh together beautifully, which, of course, to me, means that both are much more likely to be correct because they have... They have complete consistency. So it's a Sunday afternoon. You've given me a lot of your time and we're very grateful and thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Bye. Thank you.